I'm Vance Pittman, the senior pastor here at Hope Church in Las Vegas, and it is a real honor to be able to pray with you today on behalf of the Women's Medical Resource Centers of Southern Nevada. I'm so thankful for this ministry in our city and its holistic approach for standing up uh, on the issue of life and its value as God created it to be enjoyed. So I want to pray with you today. I want to read a section of Scripture out of the book of Psalms to launch us into a time of prayer, and then I want to pray. Psalm 139, the Bible says in verse 13, For you formed my inward parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance, and in your book were all written the days that were ordained for me when as yet there was not one of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God! How vast is the sum of them! O God, we come before you today. And just in reading those verses, I'm overwhelmed again with the reality that you are the creator, the giver, the sustainer of life. Lord, you are God and you alone are God. And you've created us as human beings in your image and you have given us life a life to be enjoyed, a life that can only fully be enjoyed when lived out of the overflow of a fellowship relationship with you. God, I thank you for the way that you create life. Lord, I thank you for the um, beauty of life that you've created. And Lord, today we want to pray, God, for our society, our culture, our churches, God, as we think about the issue of life. Lord, we are living in a, in a world, in a society, and unfortunately in many ways even a church culture today that does not value life. Lord, we've moved so far from the biblical standard of life as you created it to be enjoyed. And Lord, I pray first and foremost for just an attitude among believers of repentance and purity and holiness. Lord, when we only isolate as Christians one aspect of these issues that are so complex and we make that the thing we major on when there's so much inconsistency in our lives, we communicate to a lost and dying world a mixed message that seems so hypocritical. So God, I pray first and foremost for an awakening in the church, a revival of life and purity and the sanctity of marriage and the home and, and the, the value and the blessing of children. God, that that would permeate who we are so that when we as the church speak on these issues, we can speak with authority and with clarity because there's consistency in how we live. God, I pray today for the unborn. Lord, it's a sad day when one of the most dangerous places a human being can be is in the womb of their mother. And yet, Lord, in the last 50 years or 40 years since Roe v. Wade passed, over 50 million babies have been aborted in America in the womb of their mother. And God, I pray for the unborn. I pray for their protection. I pray for that sanctity of life. God, we pray for a hedge of protection around every womb in America. But God, also, Lord, today we are very burdened to pray for those who maybe in the past have made a wrong decision on this issue. God, I thank you today that you are a God of grace and mercy and forgiveness. Lord, I thank you that my past, as wicked and ungodly 
as some things in my past are. I thank you, God, that those things have been washed in the blood of Jesus. I thank you that the cross has redeemed me and that the resurrection has set me free to be new in Christ and to live out of a new identity. And I pray for every woman and every couple that has made a decision in the past that maybe was not consistent with your word and your character, God, that they would be embraced by your grace and your compassion, that they would be overwhelmed with your kindness, and Lord, that they would experience the application of the forgiveness and the freedom that is available in Christ. God, I pray for our political leaders today, and I pray for righteousness and justice. God, I pray for our president and our Congress, Lord, that you would provide wise, biblical, godly counsel in their lives. Lord, we pray for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, I pray that you'd give us wisdom as believers in the age and culture that we live in to know how to stand on the truth in love, how to be firm and faithful and yet compassionate and gentle. Lord, would you give us wisdom? And Lord, what we're really praying is would you make us like Christ? Lord, that's the epitome of who you are. You are the truth in love. Lord, may that be who we are and may we see an awakening in our land. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.